you hear the word honor, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Honor your father and mother. That's all there is. That's all that comes to your mind. Yeah. Okay, Sarai. Let's go to Sarai. Yeah, your mom's in the crowd, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. She is, but that's the first thing that popped into my head. Okay. Honor is honor your father and mother. Honor is, you know, like, I guess, like, give, it's, yeah, I didn't think about my spouse. <laughs> Let's bring your mom up here. Right? Let's bring your mom up here. Let's join mom in this. In this. Honor. But honor. Okay, so here's, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out because I see you floundering. You're like, oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. I can see it in your eyes. No, I'm not oh going to do it. Gosh. You like that? I'm, one of these days. You know what? One of these days, I'm going to take singing lessons. I'm not going to tell nobody. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to blow all of everybody away. That's, yeah. One way or another, people can get blown away. <laughs> it's going to be that bad or it got good. All right. The reason why we're having trouble thinking about honor, I'm going to tell you guys this, is because the reality, when you guys think about the word honor, all you guys who are listening or watching, honor is one of those things that almost seems old-fashioned, yes or no? It's like when we think about the concept of honor, it's like, oh, that was like yesterday, right? That, that's something honor is like, what does it even mean anymore? Because we don't really know what it means. And it's so key. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate for you guys how this concept of honor is so key. And the reality is the only time we really hear about this concept of honor is in certain movies, right? In like war movies, like not, not even like modern day war movies, like movies from like World War I and World War II. There we have stories of honor or like, you know, like samurai movies where, you know, honor, you bring honor to my family, you know, whatever. That was so bad. I you know. Saw, you saw Mulan recently. So. I saw Mulan recently, yeah. Shout out to Mulan. But yeah, you bring shame to our family. <laughs> you bring great honor. No, the reality is we don't understand is because we don't talk like that anymore. Uh -huh. We don't talk about, hey, bringing honor to my family. A lot of times that's what we mean when we talk to our kids. Hey, go out there and act right, <laughs> right? We talk about bringing honor to the family. But this concept of honor, it's almost as, it, as if it's, a lost thing. It's a thing that we've lost. It's a thing that we've forgotten around. Uh, if you look around, there, there's no one that really honors anymore. When we get into what it is, you're going to see what I'm saying. You know, we, we're so free nowadays to say whatever the heck we want to say that we don't say what we should. Yeah. We're so free nowadays to do whatever we want to do that we don't do what we should. Mm -hmm. And this thing about honor is something that we need to learn. I'm going to give you the, the, the Webster's Dictionary of, of Honor, and then I'm going to give you the Thrive Definition, because that's what we do. Do you want me to give you the Sarai Definition? Are you sure give you us the me? Sarai Definition. <laughs> Go for it, Sarai. Give it to us. That's how I they mean, do here. The they just thing, the first thing that pops up in my head when I think of honor is to pay respect to someone. You know, mm -hmm. and when you said honor your father and your mother, that's the first people that you should really respect. I mean, according to the Bible. But to pay respect would be my definition. Let's see what Webster has to say. So Sarai Webster, Webster, unlike Sarai says that we're very close, very on point. But honor is to esteem. That's another word we really don't even know. What does that even mean, right? And honor is to esteem, to show respect to admire in a high degree, but here's the key, and it's often with public celebration. How many of you guys have ever thought, you know what, I really respect that person, but you never said something? That's not honor. How many of you guys, you know, had somebody help you out, hook you up, or your, your, your kids did something well, and you're like, wow, I really, man, I really admire what that person or, or, or my kids did, but you never said something? There's this element about public celebration that goes together with honor. So I'm going to give you the thrive condensed, the thrive understanding of honor, right? Honor is the demonstration of high regard. It's much easier. Honor is the demonstration of high regard. When we talk about demonstrating, we talk about doing something. We talk about an act, a showing of something. And a showing of high regard, that's honor. So when we talk and we look about what honor is, and when you guys figure out how important this value of honor is, know that that's what it is. It's a demonstration of high regard. It's to think highly of somebody. You got it? It's a demonstration of high regard. So I'm going to give you guys a couple tips. If you guys are taking notes, this is a great time to take notes. The first thing that I want to share with you guys about this concept of honor and why we are going to value honor is that honor is the bond to good relationships. I'm going to say it again. Honor is the bond to good relationships. How do we know this? Because I know you guys are looking at me. What does that mean? Okay. I'm going to prove it to you, first of all. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to present the evidence today. If you didn't know, I'm an attorney by trade. So I'm going to put forth the evidence to you today so that it will be an undeniable fact how we have to have honor in our lives and how honor is the bond to good relationships. Okay. 
How do we know this? Because in every single key relationship that we see in Scripture, if you go and look at Scripture, okay, that's, that's part of the issue, right? If we go and look at Scripture, if we look at every relationship that God established, God tells us or demonstrates to us that honor is an absolute must. Every, I know you've never done it this way because I, the first time, as I was studying for this, the first time I ever looked at this, I looked at what was the common thread in every relationship? Honor was the common thread in every single relationship. Okay, and I'm, and I'm going to prove it to you because you're not believing me yet. It's okay. Consider your relationships for a second, though. Before I jump into it and show you, consider your relationships for a second. Consider the relationships that are broken. Don't consider the relationships that are good, but consider the ones that are broken, the ones that are no longer existent, the ones that have been ruptured and separated, okay? And ask yourself or, or, or contemplate this. If you have relationships in your life that are non-existent, in this time, there is a good chance or a good likelihood that there was a lack of honor in that relationship that brought that relationship to an end. Yes or no? So if we think about what honor is, I just, I mean, I don't even need to go any further. I don't even, you guys are the witnesses to your own trial, <laughs> right? You know that relationships broke apart because there was no honor in a relationship. If we put honor in a relationship, then my point is proven. Honor is the bond for relationships. No honor equals no bond. You guys remember that old saying? I'm probably dating myself because I'm sure they don't say this no more. You guys remember that saying? My word is bond. They don't say that no more. Thank you. Thank you, my millennial friend. Okay? They don't say my word is bond, but you guys have heard it, right? My word is bond. What I say, it goes. But honor is bond. When we can learn to put honor in relationships, we can learn to put relationships together. Somebody write that one down? That one came out of nowhere. I got to tweet that one. If we can learn to put honor in the relationships, we can learn to put relationships together. So let me, let me demonstrate to you guys how I am 100% convinced that honor is the glue to our relationships. You guys ready? Let's go. I'm going to give you a couple examples, all right? In marriage, Hebrews 13, 14, marriage should be what? Honored by all. And the marriage bed kept pure and it keeps going. But marriage, what should be done with marriage? Honored, okay? <clears throat> Deuteronomy 5, 16, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you today. Honor your father and mother. It's in the relationship. So we got a marital relationship. Now we got children to parents relationships. Honor has to be part of that right? Cool thing about this one is that this is the first one with a promise, right? That when you do, in fact, honor your mother and honor your father, whether you have them with you presently or not, God says that your days will be long and it will go well with you. It is great to know that as you get older, things will be well for you, okay? That's a promise. 1 Timothy 5, 17 through 18, the elders who direct the affairs of the church the pastors, the leaders, okay? This is something that if you're not in a church environment, that doesn't make sense to you. But if you are in a church environment, if you belong to a body or a church, this is really important. And, and I'm going to say this one boldly, not because I'm the pastor, but because it is good, not for me, it's good for you, okay? Look what it says. It says, honor the elders or honor the leaders, okay, who direct the affairs of the church, who are worthy, you ready for this? of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and teaching. See, we didn't write scriptures. We just draw the truth out of them, okay? It says that our leaders, our spiritual leaders, are worthy of double honor, especially those that dedicate to preaching and teaching, okay? Guys, look at this for a second here. I'm covering different relationship boundaries, right? The first one was marriage. The next one was in our parents. Now we're talking about in our spiritual household for our leaders, okay? We learn, need to learn this thing of honor. You want to have a better relationship. I'm going to go there with myself or Laura as the pastors of Thrive. You want to have a better relationship. Honor has to be part of that. You guys got it? it, it obviously, it goes both ways, but God is calling us into another place to say, okay, well, I don't have leaders. I don't have spiritual leaders. I, you know, my mother and father, I got that down. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, I'm not married, so it doesn't matter to me. Okay, I'm going to tie it all together. Romans 12, 10. Be, to be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Who is one another? Look to the person next to you. Look to the person seated with you. 
Look to the person you just shared this with. I know you can't look to them, but, you know, post to them or something, right? <laughs> Guys, see, it's not just about marriage. It's not just about our parents. It's not just about our leaders. It's about everybody. God says, he says it so clearly, be devoted to one another in love. How do we devote ourselves to one another in love? We need to stay connected. How do we stay connected? Through the bond of honor. Because the next thing he says is honor one another above yourselves. Honor is the glue to our relationships. If our relationships are not working out, it's probably because there's honor not in the equation.